So the four foot is drilled, these two are drilled. Very smart setup with the water change system that he's installing. This is the first time I've seen the fish room. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're actually going to be heading over to my cousin Adam's house and having a look at his brand new fish room. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you would have seen that over the last few months I've put out some videos on the progress he's made in building his brand new fish room. And with this video, we're actually going to be seeing the first fish going into the brand new fish room. So let's get into it. How neat does that look? So the painting is done, I cut all the felt board stuff. It's gonna look awesome. Bare bottom will be black underneath. Black silicon. Yeah, can't wait. So I've just cut the air distribution, well most of it anyway. So that's above the five foot rack. Goes across, it's above that for the air con. Comes across here, above all the central racks. Goes there, there's a tap there to give like pressure relief if I need it. So once I move the other four foot in there, I'll put the length across and hole and into the other garage. Got some tidying up to do obviously, but yeah. All that preparation, planning, drawings, calculations, they're finally all in. And I'm really happy how it feels actually. It just feels cozy, it doesn't feel tight. It feels, yeah, I really feel like I've made the most um, out of the space that I have in here, so. Now tidying up, so four foot is drilled, these two are drilled, but I need to give them a good clean. Mum and dad were here for a while, so I just did what I needed to do while dad was here to help me lift. So yeah, got to clean, finish drilling tanks, glue some PVC, then do the drilling in the air, run power boards, etc., for lighting. So, here's my old room. So, I've moved all of the tanks into the new room that I wanted to take with me. So, these three are going to stay here. I'm going to leave them in this side of the garage as quarantine tanks, so they're totally separate. So, if we walk around now to the new room. All the racks are obviously in, so all the PVC for the drainage around the room is all cut glued in position. All the stands are in position, they don't need to move now anymore. So um, I've cut and soft fitted the PVC for my air circuit and I just drilled this piece and tried um, fitting my taps. So they got like a thread on them, so I drilled a hole in the PVC, then thread, screw them in. So I'm gonna put, I'm putting one every eight centimeters. I bought 120 of these. Didn't wanna buy the plastic ones because I heard that they split and break, get brittle. So I paid a bit extra to get metal ones. So yeah, best thing is, is that now all these old tanks are in here and they're all drilled and bulkheads are, are fitted and in. So I've got a few running because I had um, no space to put them anywhere else. So I switched them over in here. So I've got four tank tanks running. There's a Regani pair. And yeah, I've got a Pistos. This tank, you can't see it because I've got no light on. Yeah, so these are done now and in position. So my four footer and 10 Two footers, that's a North Rax rock. And the rest are ready for tanks. Okay, so I bought some more fittings. So this is where the side wall of the tank is. So this is in the tank and that's out of the tank. So in the tank, we have the, the thread of the bulkhead in. So this is an elbow I bought that screws on. So I bought this so that I can give myself a bit more um, height in the tank with the water level. So I can put this on this thread and then just turn it and leave it um, to set the height that I want the water to sit at before it starts spilling over into the bulkhead. And then on the outside of the bulkhead to get to my PVC drain, 
So I've got this which threads, screws into there. Then a piece of 13mm irrigation hose will go onto that barb. Then this elbow goes into that and then we have this hose coming down into the PVC drainage. So I'll show you, I just loosely set it up on one tank. So you can see here's my elbow. So I don't have the water level right up to the bulkhead in this tank. But if I did, I'd then be able to turn this to adjust when the water starts spilling over. So I can have it up really high if I wanted to really handy and so then this is it on the other side so the thread into the barb then this barbed elbow irrigation hose goes down and into the PVC drain so I bought the connections I need to connect my air pump to my PVC airline that I ran around the ceiling so this came with the pump so the pump goes into this side so 40 mil piece of PVC pipe will fit in here also into here then this is a reducer 40 mil to 25 then I happen to have a little bit of 25 mil here and that's a 25 to 20 reducer which is what my circuit is so I couldn't get a 40 to 20 unfortunately so I had to get this one as well and put a little piece of 25 mil in but it'll do the job okay so this irrigation stuff isn't exactly the easiest to work with because of how bent it is but anyway all these tanks their overflows and drainage is now set up. So these three all going into that T piece. And then in the center here I've got five tanks draining. Those two, those two, and only that left two footer. Yeah, so they're in there. And then these three tanks. Well done. Okay, so this is a test of my overflow system. So you can see I've got this tank full of water. So I'm using that as my reservoir to fill up the tank below. So I'm using airline at the moment. So you can see here the airline is filling up here and the water is overflowing into the elbow through the bulkhead irrigation pipe. And for the time being, I'm just testing it into the bucket. But this hose would be shoved into my PVC drainage circuit. So that's how I plan on doing an automated water change system. I'll have four millimeter airline hoses topping up tanks like this, maybe on a timer, um, or I can just turn it on for an hour or two at a time. And then the excess water will flow into the elbow through the bulkhead and out into the drain. Okay, so I've got these two tanks filling up and so they're overflowing. This one overflows here and down into the drain. And this one is overflowing on this side and into the drain. So the water is successfully running around my circuit. I quickly whipped up some connection here so I could add a washing machine hose just to test this out and so that I can actually do water changes in here easily. And it's successfully draining. No leaks. Air okay, circuit is done. Pump is running in the next room. All taps are on. I've got like 70 taps open and I can feel the air pressure through all of them. So yeah, that's got 18. So 18 taps for three five footers. I've got three taps here and three taps on this side for the three narrow three footers. Above these six three footers, I've got 20. Above the six three footers on this side, there's another 20. And then I got 40 above but uh, how many have I got? 11 tanks on this side, so I've got plenty. And you can see it goes through the wall here to the other garage where it's turned on. So I do have a bit of noise here, but it's actually, the noise is because I got all the taps open 
and I haven't secured the PVC to the wood legs yet, it's just sitting there, so there's a bit of reverberation. So hopefully it'll be a lot quieter once I strap it down and actually have um, the taps that I'm not using closed. But yeah, another good milestone now. So I can connect the air lines and then I can actually run all of these 11 tanks now. I don't have to worry about buying crappy little pumps and then connecting lines and splitters and stuff like that. So yeah, very happy. Okay, finally got our first delivery of tanks. So I got the three small bookshelf tanks. Yeah, I'm really happy, like nice and crisp. And he positioned the holes where I told him and thankfully it looks like I did the measurements right. So the bulkheads are gonna fit between the legs. And then I got three of the bigger three footers. So yeah, happy days. I'm gonna, I need to give them a clean. Um, they got sawdust on them, but I'm gonna give them a clean and fill them up. These guys, it's Walter I in the new fish room. They haven't spawned for me in like nine months. They only had one spawn in their old tank. So pretty happy. I'm back on the wagon. Last time they spawned was like 12 or 13 or something. So I'm not expecting this to be much bigger. Oh wow, there's some pro with the male on the other side. Okay. Not expecting the spawn to be bigger even though they're, you know, nine months older because the female really hasn't grown to be honest. The male has. But yeah, the female stayed. That's a female. Pretty small. Ragani also have fry, but I've only ever seen one at a time. How good does that look? So tonight, I'll start putting bulkheads and fittings on. And he said I should give it another day or two for um, the brace to set properly before I fill them. Um, the tanks are, like you said, you know, the tanks hold water and everything, but just to let the brace strengthen a bit more before I fill it. So yeah, only these three now left. And obviously my air issue. But yeah, all happening. It looks so good, eh? Looks, and it's not cramped, it's comfy. So, yeah, so now I'm going to put all the bulkheads on and then, unfortunately, I didn't get my lights today. Maybe tomorrow or Friday. Then I'm going to run um, all of them and set them all up. So I bought, like, clips um, so that I can have all the cables running nice and neat on the timber and hopefully like hidden so there's no hanging anywhere so um yeah i've got six outlet power boards like this one so each rack will have one power board that has all lights going into it which then goes into one of the wi-fi plugs so um i've got six lights for the north rocks rack and they're all gonna go into that one power board and that one power board goes into the Wi-Fi controller so I can turn them all on and off um, at the same time essentially they're all on the same schedule so each rack will be on its own um, own Wi-Fi adapter so those three are gonna go there and then these these are this rack I bought the big six foot lights for so one across that one across those two those two etc so they're all going to be connected into one power board that's going to go into Wi-Fi adapter. Which I'm probably going to have to move to this one because the bulkhead will be in the way. But yeah, happy days. I really just wish I could get my air saw today so that I can start getting sponges running. But yeah, I really just can't believe how good it looks. Really happy. So I figured out how I'm gonna hang the light. So far from being elegant, but put a screw in and then I just cable tie to the screw. Okay guys, we're at Adam's fish room. Have a look at that. 
all the tanks are in. Tanks, 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 tanks. <laughs> so this rack's got some five footers on it. You can see the plumbing is set up. The bulkhead, water will drain out down this line, down to the common drain line. All these tanks feed into that common drain line. And that drain line goes out to the drain. I love these tanks here. These are beautiful, like little bookshelf looking tanks that he's had made up. And uh, yeah, just you can see the size of them compared to my hand. I think they're three foot by about 12 inches by 12 inches. And uh, all the way down, Elmo making an appearance. <laughs> and then in here, we've got uh, 12 three footers, six on each side. And you see on the other side, it's three footers again. All brand new aquariums, guys. You can see they all drain into these common drain lines. This common drain line begins from here, from the middle rack and then goes all the way down underneath these tanks. You see that PVC pipe there, and then it wraps around the room. All the aquariums in the fish room drain to that common drain line, and then out. And you can divert the water to the garden, or to the bathroom that's connected to this fish room that's just behind this door. Let's look at this, some of the fish he's got in here. Some cordo punks, beautiful little shell dollar from Lake Tanganyika. You can see the shell, they've almost uh, buried pretty well there. He's got a pair in here. Uh, he's a breeding pair of uh, Jitalochromus regani. They're in here. That's the male, and the female's quite large. She's hiding at the moment. And then, I believe that's Neolampologus walteri. Yes, it is. And that might be a breeding pair. Beautiful fish, I reckon one of the classiest Tanganyikan cichlids. <laughs> it's just the way the scales are. Checkered pattern down the body. It's beautiful. And then these little sand sifters. We've had them for a while now. And some of them are starting to colour up. They're getting the blue coloration with the yellow lips. You can see what they've done to the sand. They keep seeing they keep sifting the sand and they look like a bumpy appearance on it. Yeah, you can see it now. Compared to this sand, <laughs> it looks very different. But these guys are quite tame. And they come up to to your hand. The moment they see the hand above the fish tank, they think they're going to get fed. Very tame guys, especially compared to the Regani, who are quite skish. And then, yeah, more tanks. These tanks he's had uh, for a while. They're not brand new. And some other fish he's got in here are some Alenqua. Pistogramma Alenqua. Agazizi, I believe, yeah? Yeah. Agazizi Alenqua. Agazizi Alenqua. Alenqua is the northern part of Brazil. That's Sorry. Where the name from. Sorry about the reflections, guys. These guys are very, very shy. I haven't even seen them since I've been here, so um, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you what they look like. But they are in there. Nice little dwarf cichlid from South America. Yeah, these tanks are looking awesome. I really like the way he's done the bulkheads for his drip system. He got the lights today and uh, the tanks yesterday. <laughs> so everything's pretty much brand new. A lot of cleaning to do, get these tanks ready for fish. Everything's up to him now to get it all, <laughs> get it all sorted. We're not waiting for anyone anymore. So very good. You can see the aircon he's using in this room. Absolutely no need to use it today. It's very warm in here even with, without it on. So he's insulated it very, very well. And yeah, everything's run. All the lights are run on these smart adapters that he can control from his phone. Having the phone to control the lights, he can check from anywhere in the world if there's power in the fish room. Uh, and he can turn the lights on and off from his phone. So, some automation in there, which is really good. Anyway, there you go guys, it's finally happened. This is the first time I've seen the fish room. Really, really like it.
looks awesome. Loving it. Very neat. Looks amazing. Very smart setup with the water change system that he's installing. And yeah, I think he's outdone himself with the title of one of the neatest fish rooms in Sydney with his past fish room. This is going to take the cake now. <laughs> there you go. So there you have it guys, Adam's brand new fish room. What do you guys think? I personally think it looks amazing. He's done a fantastic job with that room and it looks really, really neat. I love what he's done with it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.